Hi and welcome to Geekology. I'm David. I'm Sven. And tonight, Transformers, a definitive G1 collection. Woo! Right, um, you'll have noticed that this has been the first one we've done of these for a while, certainly because this is the first time I've had a delivery of them since April. Um, it is now July. Um, there were cock-ups, <laughs> multiple cock-ups. Uh, a lot of people haven't had their books. This is because, from the looks of things, though they haven't admitted to it, oh. there appears to have been a failure in their database. Oh, I thought it was just you. This has happened across the board. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh there must be a lot of people. people. Now, if you haven't had anything delivered, contact Hachette immediately, because um, basically what looked like happened, because I actually got a delivery through that was misaddressed, and it actually got to me, which was my replacement issue one, which they yeah, sent out separately. They sent out separately for no apparent reason, uh, even though they said it was going to be in with two of the rushes. Yeah. Um, and though the two issues that came, I think, almost the same day, if not the day, if not the day before, were addressed correctly, that one was addressed with the number of my house after the road, which is completely backwards, at least here in the UK. And my name was backwards, Ooh. which meant that apparently issue 9 and 10 and my book ends were then sent out with that addressing and the post office got confused and it ended up going back to Hachette but they didn't bother to contact me there was no mention of it it was only until I chased them up going why is it saying on the website on my account that you've had that you they've, they've been returned I've not had them and then we got to the bottom of what had happened with the address yeah and they said don't worry in 14 days it'll come back out to you 30 days later, I contacted them going, where is it? Still hadn't come. Um, which was about, that was about mm, 15 days ago. Um, working days, that is. And um, I, was I, I emailed them this time going, what the bloody hell's going on? Here's my actual address. Here's the details. Will you please sort this out? So what I've essentially got here is what I believe should have been May and June. Right. Perhaps. Might even be April and May. I'm not entirely sure. I've lost track. But I'm certainly... I, I know what you've got here. I don't even need to check the database. You've <laughs> got 9, 10, 11 and 12. As far as when they're supposed to be announced, no idea. No idea. No idea. No, okay. So, yes. Let's, let's quickly have a look at these because this was in the box with 9 and 10, which is my book. Okay, this is your subscription gift. Subscription so there was gift, a key yes. ring. Yeah, had the keyring, had the mug. Had the mug. Had that weird tin cover. Yeah, thing. that was yeah. Cover. one of the worst issue covers ever did. Any sense? Use a British comic. It's a British collection. Why aren't you using a British comic cover? Weird people. Right. Um, there we go. There's yours. <laughs> that's Nick mine. Nicky knows I like these. Ooh. That's quite nice, actually. Yes, Hasbro logo stuck on the bottom. Uh, yeah, it's a shame we def we It's a shame it's not actually the correct logo. Oh, they're but... stamped. I thought they'd have been lasered. Yeah, um, they're still nice. They're still nice. They, are. they do the job. Um, Paint jobs okay. Um, I'm yeah. really tempted to put the back of my nail across it and see if it scratches. But <laughs> because this is yours, <laughs> I will. I will refrain. <laughs> have, have attached on you to the base. Um, it's all about the base. It's all <laughs> no trouble. Um, yeah, yeah, it does the job. I mean, they're, they're not perfect representations of the logos, but you well, know, considering that no, 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 of course they're not. Because, they're, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like my brain, my brain um, only just yeah. But you know, considering the production method and the way it's actually you know got to stay together and not fall apart. Um, fair enough. Fair yep, play. Okay. That'll do nicely. I, I have no real issues with that. Will I be using them? Yeah. Hang on. What? Well, See, if I receive that, I'd have an issue with it. Actually, oh. I'd have two, nine and ten. See what I have to put up with? I mean, seriously, what the hell? Right, so let's get rid of them out of the way. Right. Okay, so the three gifts are good. Yep, let's okay. get on with let's the get on with this. Um, as you can probably tell, um, this is our second attempt at this bit. Um, being as like the, the <laughs> he said I was a dumbass and I couldn't ask the questions. <laughs> I've been told to be quiet for this run. Yeah. Um, it would also help if the camera was working. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. This is in fact issue nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. The stickers are missing because uh, we tore those off, off earlier. On the 
first run through. Um, okay, Trial by Fire. This is issue 9, but is also volume 10, just to be really, really confusing. What we have here is um, the Marvel G1 American comic. It is the combination of, well, primarily American comic, it is a combination of the Headmasters miniseries, which was a four issue miniseries in 1987 to introduce the Headmasters and the Target Masters, which I will explain to you in a moment. Those of you buying uh, Titan Return stuff at the moment will find this fascinating. Um, Actually, I'm going to have a stab at it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That'll be hilarious. Because yeah. he ran through this to me because I asked him. Okay. Really good question. It also includes a couple of uh, issues worth of story when the Headmasters and Target Masters joined the mainline comic, and then there's a, a two part story that was from the British comic as well. Okay, right. Ready so, for this. my understanding of this is this Autobots got fed up with war. Boo hoo! So, we're gonna go to another planet and try and these peace. really cool, hip, and groovy people, imaginatively called. Nebulans. Nebulans, who, unlike the animated Aren't series green. where they're green, yeah. in the comics are skin colour. Oh. So they give their heads over as a prize, sort of, a, hey, we're peaceful people, because in this universe, surrendering your head is not that big a deal. Yes, so, because these are Transformers that actually don't die when you take parts off them because they're robot-type beings, and the only way to actually kill a Transformer in the, the original comics was to get their brain module out of their head or wherever it's been stored and crush it. That is it. That is the only way you can kill a Transformer, otherwise they'll just go into Stasis Lock and they can be repaired later. Stasis Lock, however, being a concept that actually came on later and was retro retrofitted into the old stories. But it so makes sense when you look at the number of, of Stasis pods that Autobots are in after things like Starscream hits them with the energy of an underbase and things like that. So after a while of living cool, hip and groovy lives where they pick flowers and tell stories to small children, skip the fields. bad guys land. Ooh. Because they followed them. Yeah, yeah. And because for some unknown reason, she we're not, we're not talking them. about it. Lord Zarek, who was the leader of, an old, of, of the sort of like other side of the political spectrum to the leader who accepted the heads yeah. from Maximus and so on and so forth, I think he contacts Cybertron and reports that the Autobots are causing problems and to come and get them and Scorponok and his Decepticons basically go huh I wonder if that's an energy rich planet that would be hilarious and pop on neither. So the indigenous population go oh god well here's an idea we'll genetically modify ourselves to become your heads biomechanically not genetically. We will alter ourselves to become your heads to help you fight better. The only bit of that that made any sense was that the good soldiers, the ones who were crack shots, became weapons. So, yeah, yeah okay. Um, in an equally uh, what the hell move, they've got their own version of Donald Trump who goes, we don't like them, so we'll turn some of our people into heads for the bad guys to fight with as well. So you've got good guys and bad guys fighting away with indigenous life forms on a planet before the Autobots go, you know what, we might be causing some trouble for the indigenous life forms. Let's bugger off and see if we can find another planet where we can cause havoc. Oh! It's a shiny new place. Our ancestors referred to it as the 13th colony. I think they called it Earth. I might have been getting some of Battlestar Galactica in there. <laughs> but it might have been. It yeah. was roughly that. Yeah, yeah. So they basically. Did I miss anything no, important? No. no, no. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's I think basically. we should do this for all of them. For you should give me cliff yeah. notes, and I should explain the story. <laughs> so yeah. Um, okay. To be fair, if you're a new fan. And by this new fan, I mean a fan who has not been able to get a hold of the mm. comics. You wouldn't necessarily know the back history to the headmaster. Now, newer fans will be aware of Titan Returns, which is the current segment of Transformers Generations, which is the ver the Transformers series that's aimed at teens and up, basically. So it's Where... Teen Titans for Transformers? No, teens and up. Not little kids. Have you seen the Teen Titans cartoon? It's kind of I scary. Actually, no. Yeah, don't, no, no. The old Teen Titans cartoon that was epic. The new ones a bit. What the hell? Um, but you know, Batman turns up occasionally. He goes, I'm Batman, and pretty much that's it. Um, 
<laughs> oh, so it's the Keaton version of Batman. Um, yeah. Aren't all the animated versions of Batman basically based on they should be Keaton's Keaton. version? They should be Keaton. But there we go. Anyway, right. He did um, an interview and they went, you were a Batman, and he went, no. So battles go on. Um, <coughs> you end up with uh, Gal Galen, who's the head of the good guy government of the yeah. universe, <laughs> being Fortress Maximus's head. Um, and they just come to the conclusion that they, they've all they've done is brought the civil war from Cybertron to Nebulos. Uh, let's get out of here because we're causing problems, basically. So they but you have the missed planet. the epic seventies haircut. Yeah, they have. Lived, so they basically end up leaving the planet. Galen takes the Autobots. Uh, Lord Zarek follows with the Decepticons. He's Lord Zarek becomes the head of Scorponok. Okay, can okay. I ask you another really stupid question yeah. that I missed the first time? Because mm -hmm. you know, who? All right, so the Autobots go, we're basically we're causing havoc, we're going to leave. Mm. And it doesn't occur to them that they're basically just leaving Decepticons. No, they kind of they kind of draw the Decepticons away and take them with them. Oh, because they're not going to make a note. So, by the way, there's plenty of energy on yeah, this planet. Yeah, they, they, Pop they back later. Basically find a way. Now, later on, um, they basically... After the, the mini series where everybody's disappeared from Nebulus and made starting to make their way across the galaxy, do the headmasters bugger off with them? Yes, because they've been bio biomechanically engineered; they can't be undone. Yeah, and you're it's not going to want to stay in your home world, are you? Apparently not. Okay. Well, they they've, they've they we find out later. I don't know if it, I can't remember if it's mentioned in in the original mini series, but they do something to the planet to make it poisonous to Cybertronian life. Okay. Yeah. So well, nanobots. Kind of understand where that comes from. Um, no, I mean, it's some chemical in the atmosphere and the water supply or something that basically is corrosive okay. or something. And the Autobots and Decepticons can't really stay on the planet for very long. They can touch down, interact a little bit, but they have to get off pretty rapidly before they get permanently damaged. Oh, they've got Kirk syndrome. Anyway. Beam down, get off, get up. Pretty much. Um, in the space, in, in, in the journey across space to get to Earth, which is where they finally end up, uh, Fortress Maximus is disassembled and reassembled into a larger form. Um, so he now has the ability to turn into the sort of like big battle station -y thing. But it means that Galen, which used to transform into Fortress Maximus's head, now transforms into Cerebros's head, and it's Cerebros that turns into Fortress Maximus's head. Because they cocked up when they did the original story and didn't put Cerebros in it, <laughs> which is part of the toy. Oh. And I think, Mar I think Hasbro went. Um, <laughs> excuse not me. how that toy works, uh, so, which is explains why they rewrote it. So basically, he has this bigger version. Um, so they end up travelling over to to Earth, and they run into Spike Witwicky, uh, who is the brother of Buster Witwicky. Because in the comics, it was Buster who was the main character who linked up with yeah. Bumblebee and the others, and Spike was at college, whereas Spike is the name of the main character in the cartoon series. Which and why the heck would you... No, no, that's, that's Sam. Oh, that's Sam, yeah. Right. But they introduced Spike into the comics simply because they'd taken the name of the human from the cartoon series to be Fortress Maximus's head's head. It wasn't Galen. So Galen basically gets replaced by Spike, essentially. Okay. That's part of the story. Galen basically gives his life to save Spike because he thinks he's brought the war to Earth for the first time. And, and he's not really aware of the of the other Autobots and Noctimus, etc. yet, I don't think, at this point. Um, so, yes, he gives it up and Spike takes his place and becomes Fortress Maximus's head's head, essentially. Double Headmaster. Yes. I've got to say, you've given a choice, I always prefer Double Head. <laughs> anyway. That then flowed into um, the desert island in sp of space and storyline, which basically links up Fortress Maximus's Decepticons dealing with Ratbat and Shockwave. Okay, I, you, I asked this question the first time, so I'll ask it just for the sake of Nick. Oh, look, Donobots! Oh, what do you mean they're not Donobots? No. Oh, it's not Donobot, but that one's it's a pterodactyl. Oh, it's from the horror range, really? Okay. No, 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 t no, 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 no. pterodactyl. It's a bat. It's a mind wipe. Oh, okay. What was uh... There was an alligator called Skull Cruncher. Yeah. And then the Headmaster Horrorcon. Who yeah, the Headmaster Horrorcon. He's, he's, he's Snapdragon. Who yeah. has just a plain like T-Rex. Yeah. It's not a T-Rex. T-Rex. Yeah. And a, a humanoid robot. Okay. Okay. Here's 
Fort Max getting the point. Unlike yourself. Um, <laughs> never gonna happen, never gonna happen. Uh, cover gallery, so there's the headmaster issues. Mm. There's the American cover where Fort Max gets the shaft. And uh, there's the British one where we call it Dead in Space. <laughs> Somebody evidently just watched the movie Life Force and thought, <laughs> how can we steal that? Yeah. Uh, I must admit I prefer the British comic covers. No! I think one really? One. Oh, I don't know. Oh, shock horror. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so there's Lee Sullivan, Dan Reed, Will Simpson, Dave Elliott. Can't think why I prefer those. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and there we go. And then we've got uh, a two-part story. Um with Will Simpson doing the art for the British comic, uh, which is epic because the British comic generally was, let's be brutally honest, um, generally, generally fantastic. So yes, um, it, it screams um, now, oh yes, yes, now it screams Dan Reed, cup story. There's a final, st final story in here. Now, in the Headmasters miniseries, they actually introduced Cup, Blur and Hot Rod who were originally from Transformers the movie to try and explain why there was toys of them running around now with Target Master weapons. <sighs> Turns out there were Target Masters in the past and then they turn into the characters we know from the movie. So they couldn't have just picked up the weapons. It also meant that in the British comic they had to kind of explain how Cyclonus and Scourge got Target Masters so they ended up being thrown back in time so they could join Scorpion's troops. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we are talking about a comic that ended up with two Megatrons just to solve a plot hole. Okay. okay. Um, so this, this Dan Reed drawn um, story, which is by Simon Firm, basically depicts a version of Cup who's got fed up with life, has given up, and is just drifting around waiting to die, essentially. But then some daft young hothead turns up and basically he has to rescue him and um, tells this child Autobot he's on his own, only to go jumping in and between him and Blur, they basically say the end. Yeah, it's just basically these these three getting together for the first time kind of thing. That's where it comes from. It's quite a nice little story. It was kind of a one shot in the British comic. It's cool. Oh okay. yeah. So that issue nine, for heaven's sake, go and get it. Brilliant. Absolutely. <clears throat> issue ten, which is volume twenty one, because they're not sports. Okay, um, this is the first part of Regeneration 1. Okay, stupid question I asked at this point was because there's such a big jump difference in the uh, the numbering of the issues was is it still worth reading these things out of order to which he said yeah they're all self-contained stories except for one or two bits that weave an arc that's yeah. as interesting as a tapestry throughout time and motion. So and essentially, yeah. I mean this is the thing, it's re <laughs> Regeneration 1 was the very late on IDW produced final segment to the original comic, but the original American comic, because it disregards some of the stuff that happened in the British comic, and completely goes around Generation 2, which is very frustrating, being a massive fan of the Generation 2 comic. But, you can't really it's have ironic, a... ironic, that, really. Yeah, you can't really have a go at Regeneration 1 on that basis, because it's the same writer. Just having another stab at the story. And it's kind of like a similar story, but told in a it's a different timeline version. They they can run parallel in two different alternative universes. Or something. They do actually in the towards the end of Regeneration One, they do actually approach the whole multi universe thing a bit, because you have multiple Optimus Primes making an appearance, multiple versions of Hot Rod and Rodimus Prime from not just the different G one comics, but there's actually the version from uh, the anime uh, Transformers, the animated series, but not the G one one, the later one, and other things, and you're just like, oh, oh, oh. but it's quite cool the way they handle it in a lot of ways. But okay, this is the first part of Regeneration One. I've got a feeling it'll stretch through maybe three volumes of this, maybe four, something like that. Um, but the first thing that grabs you about it is the artwork is gorgeous. The artwork is nice. 
it's a stunning bit of work. Um, but then you have got colouring by Jean-Paul Beauvais, um, inks by Stephen Baskerville, and pencils by Andrew Wildman. Quite how it'd be anything but excellent is beyond me, frankly. Um, but if you take this as an alternative to Generation 2 and you accept both of them as alternative universes, that's just fine. Okay. Um, the first thing they do with it is they kind of catch you back up with the stories from the original American G1 comic. Yeah, basically they go, woodly wee, woodly wee. The only thing that bugs me is the fact that Hasbro stuck their oar in and for some reason Optimus Prime has got blue optics. Yeah, as it no. is in a cartoon series. Whereas in the original British and American comics and the original G1 toy, his optics were yellow. Now this is where we've just saved you 20 minutes due to the camera where me and him have the same classic debate about bleeding eye colour in Transformers. <laughs> To which I said, you know what, why don't they just put an end to the bloody thing, have a little push button on it so the, the robots flip the eye colours. To which he then went, oh they did a masterpiece, they did that, that's in a review that I'll be bashing your head in with later. It's like, ah. So yeah, I dropped myself in it there. Yeah, me and my smart ideas. This is a Dinobot. Masterpiece Dinobot. This being Grimlock, not Masterpiece Dinobot, the Dinobot from Beast Wars. Grimlock is the leader of the Dinobot. Yes. Following me. Okay. So yes. Um, so blue eye prime. Twenty minutes he went on about that. Blue eye prime. I can deal with. Um, what is nice though is that Megatron's kept his colouring, so he's got yellow optics and his blue bucket head. Um, which and it was only the G one comic that ever gave him the blue bucket head, because it should really be silver like the rest of versions of him. But it's the comic, so I'm going to let it off. Um, we did a whole load of jokes about it off and on, and it just well, we'll save you the trouble. He just likes playing with helmets. Um, There's a whole thing about double head for headmasters as well, and we, we, we've right, skipped that part. Yeah. Anyway, right, um, the eye was gorgeous. Was... The idea is that basically um, the Autobots have abandoned Earth, and unfortunately, they didn't realise that Megatron was actually still functional or could become functional, and he has risen the dead. Again. Uh, again. Uh, none of these people heard of Taroni. He's basically turned the Decepticons that were running around, well, who were dead on Earth, into zombies to... Because nobody's thought them. about dismantling the bloody things and melting them down. Well, recognise some of the characters. It's, you should recognise all of them. Well, they make toys of well, them. Chop shop. Um, is a deluxe Insecticon. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, it's that one that looks like a scarab, isn't it? Kind of, yeah. Oh. What? Nothing. And on that bombshell, um, there's a joke that you won't get. No. <laughs> but everybody watching is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Go on, give us some kickback down below. Um, yes, uh, I'm still... I was just wondering why that energy beam was green. It's normally red. What, which energy beam? What am I looking at? Mm, Scooch one more patch back. That weapon there is green. Yeah, it's probably because it's coming out of a deluxe Insecticon. It's a bit melty. It's a bit okay. acidic. Um, not your eye. No. I, think, I think it's actually like a blast of fluid, not, not an energy beam. Fair enough. A bit hard don't, in comic don't quote format. Because uh, I don't remember, I'm, I'm having problems remembering this to be fair. For some reason G2 is completely stuck in my head and I can't remember this quite so much. Um, oh look, a bunch of wreckers. Epic. As for you, Mr. Whirl, your only toy from 1984 or 1985 I don't have. From Britain, from the British and American Ranger. Plug, plug, Damn who it. wants that? If somebody's got it, let me know. <laughs> uh, there's Bludgeon. And, uh, yes. Um, the storyline basically follows on from there. We have a bunch of um, oh, zombie Decepticons. Have, yeah, I actually have a set of Transformer comics. Do you? Yeah. Zombie Star into Zombies. What, Infestation? Yeah. I've got most of the crossovers I for that, to be fair. The Infestation 1 is in there. And part of Heart of the Darkness as it crosses over Heart and Darkness. So we'll come to that in a bit. Put it back! Do you behave yourself, young man? Um, anyway. So the storyline, basically, uh, Spike, who used to... Tell you the quality of our show in I'm the Butler. 
The butler. <clears throat> Shows you the Call quality the of the show when I'm the eye candy. I'm just here to look good and listen to this. How rude, Jean-Luc. Stop playing with the puppy. <laughs> anyway, um, Spike is a bit miffed off with the Autobots, um, even though he used to merge with Fort Max, and uh, basically blames Another them for what's fiction. happened. <laughs> and basically blames Optimus for what's happened on Earth because he abandoned it and didn't just, you know, Megatron's late so he's to the entire place. perfectly valid point. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Um, so we go through it, and the storyline's good. It's very, very good. So it's how just, do they dissuade him from this perfectly valid point? They don't. Okay. That's the best part. They don't. It's not one of these written so everybody's all happy... Go lucky, everything gets reset by the end of it. It doesn't. Okay. It's really, really nice in that way because it's just like, yeah, and, and Optimus has actually got to the point where he thinks killing Megatron is the only thing he can do. Why he didn't come to this conclusion back on the home world? Anyway, we've got nice little touches in here, like a mention of Auntie, who was in the British comic, and only the British comic. What's and Auntie? Auntie is the. AI of the Autobots computer on the Ark. Because Mother was already taken? Apparently, yes. But um, I see that in my head canon that the model number of the computer is Teletran 1 and the AI that runs on Teletran 1 is Auntie, which allows the cartoon and the comic to kind of coexist. Okay. Okay. I'm glad that you resolved that issue in your own head. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, the storyline was pretty good, the art was pretty good, um, it certainly was great, I mean the art was gorgeous, let's be honest, it's stunning. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's Galvatron running around screaming like a banshee. Um, the cover of gallery, look at that, it's just, wow. Mm. So this is gorgeous, I mean, look at that! Oh yeah! It's a bit Game of Thrones, but look at that! You've um, never watched Game of Thrones. I watched the first six episodes. That was enough for me. Thank you very much. Really? Somebody yes. actually sat you down and forced you to I watch six episodes? I sat myself down to watch it. The first thing I see is guts all over the floor making a symbol. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to get into this. <laughs> um, I was horribly right. I, 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 I decided not to watch any more of the show when a small child was thrown, was basically came off the top of a tower after Pushed. a brother and sister were up. Yeah, no. Remo no. uh, you know what? Let me loan you a box set. It's called Rome. I think you might enjoy it. I think you're wrong. Have it Spartacus blood in the sand. I'm That's just going to rewatch Supergirl because it's fun. Yeah. Okay. Or The Flash because it's fun. fun okay. And well, entertaining. I bet Max Headroom, 20 minutes into the future. I've, I've finally managed to get hold of Do you have a season. revolver? I liked Max Headroom. Good for you. Um... Yes, here's some more of the cover gallery. It's great. It's lovely. It's it's bloody stunning, frankly. Um, uh, what's not to like? Stop wrecking the wreckers. Son of a... Um, yeah. It's great. Look at that. Look at it. It's gorgeous. Optimus. <laughs> Go Cobra. We rock you. Um, yes. Um, it, 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 it's following on the story from, from the original comic. Uh, in a slightly different direction than G2 did it. Great. Wonderful. Stunning. Go Cobra! <laughs> Go Joe! Go Cobra! Action Force. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know why I'm cheering Go Cobra, you need to watch Robot Chicken. Quite a bit of it. See, the only thing... See, the problem is, is that you, you say G.I. Joe to me these days, all I can see is Rachel Nichols. That's it. <laughs> Rachel Nichols. That's all I can see. It's all I want to see. Rachel Nicole. Please move on to yeah. some of this gorgeous artwork. Yes, this is stunning. We had uh, quite a long conversation about how yeah. nice the artwork is. Sven, although he's very into certain types of comic, yeah. he's not a, a comic consumer. Uh, my, I... Um, my way I describe this is this is the Man of Steel to G, the, the original G1 comics, Chris Reeve movies. And it's I basically commented desaturated. That <laughs> it was reminiscent of the, the mid-90s Vertigo wave when they were doing stuff like uh, Preacher. 
It's a prime example. So it's a completely different style to what I'm used to from a Transformers comic, but oh my god, is this really nice. It is really nice. And G.I. Joe didn't do that format either, which again is, is kind of There's interesting. a very recent comic of G.I. Joe where the, 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 the art style was a real put off. Apparently, the storyline was quite decent, but I couldn't get past the art style. <laughs> it's one but of then it's not really my thing, is it? Well, the crossover between G.I. Joe and you've got to bear in mind, you know, Neil Gaiman, Sam Man, yeah. it's I'm right. used to darker images in my comics. But this is the Dreamwave era, so half expect Dr. Sprite to run around with a massive chest for no good reason. Um, but this artwork is, I mean, look at that. Stunning. He's not wrong. And the storyline apparently is quite decent. I think I read this back in the day, but I cannot remember it. So I'll be rediscovering this when I read through it. Um, it's quite, it looks something different, something fresh for me, I suppose, because I don't remember it. And uh, yeah, it's amazingly very, very different, like I said. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward to being able to sit down and read that. Um, I would certainly say that if you're a subscriber, you, you, you're going to enjoy that. If you're not, and this isn't really the kind of thing you can cherry pick, but if you were cherry picking it, I would suggest picking this one. It would be worthwhile doing. Um, so this is issue 11. Actually, I think people volume, would cherry pick this mm. if they were collecting the individuals and they were missing a few. Right, yeah. That would be Just the only gas. reason you would do it. Right, so now okay. we're on to one that we didn't cover before, so right. I guess for us, you silly things, go for okay. it. Okay, um, issue 12, which is volume 50, so this is very much more closer to now, um, it's IDW. I've in, one thing I've noticed is that we've gone very generic recent artwork that was from various product lines including wrapping paper and stuff which is where this artwork's come from. I like the wrapping paper. That is not from the same source as these. Is it not? No, absolutely not because there's detail on it. Okay. These are very much based on the cartoon series. Yeah, they do look more... Yeah, that's got uh, the bits and pieces from the original toy. Um, story so far... Apparently Nova Prime, Galvatron, Cyclonus, Scourge and Jaxus left Cybertron in the first arc. So this is a complete reboot of anything G1 because you're mixing together an older Prime who was a Matrix holder, a future version of Megatron who no longer is a future version of Megatron, um, Cyclonus and Scourge who in the G1 universe were rebuilds of two almost dead characters who've been thrown out of Astro Train in Transformers the movie and Jaxus was the leader of the Generation 2 Decepticons from the Generation 2 comic. Okay. So you're just like, what are these three, these, what are these lot doing together? Um, apparently they've gone into the dead universe, which I assume is the universe where Unicron's wiped out all life. That would make sense. They've become undead versions of themselves and Nova Prime is now going around calling himself Nemesis Prime. And from what I understand... Yeah, because Generations Prime crashed onto a planet. It was, it was shocking. Generations Prime. Are you referring Generations to the sodding... Nemesis. Are you, you're not referring to these sodding movies again, are you? <laughs> filth. Um, no! That's a filth. Star Trek Generations! Nemesis! It was... A... <clears throat> Shall we move on, Sven? Yes, please. Okay. okay. Um, who did the artwork for this? Because it makes me want to vomit. Um, okay. Heart of Darkness, the, the, the artwork's done by Ulysses Farinas. Okay. I'm not a fan. Okay. Let's be honest, I'm not a fan. Infestation, towards the back, is done by Nick Roche. I will be a fan of that. Yeah. I already know that. Um, but what is going on here? I mean, that's supposed to be Galvatron. One Earth. Look at the face. No, okay, yeah. I'll, no. Yeah, no. It's an uh, oh. um, Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting style, style. of an awful yeah. lot of purple. I... Yeah. yeah what I mean. the hell is that meant to be? Multiple eyes coming out of eyes and mouth. I don't know. 
we're, we're into an era of comics where I have tried to get into this IDW stuff at least four times at this point in different ways, and I cannot get into it. Okay. I just can't. I just It doesn't matter how many times I try. This style of artwork does not help um, me at all. It's basically um, rewriting ancient Transformers history as well. It's just... Okay, I know it's its own continuity. It's separate from G1 as I know it. Um, but it doesn't help. But it doesn't help. Um, I mean... I don't understand what they're going for in the style there. Uh, well, I'd say kindergarten, but mm. I could be wrong. Yeah, went to CRC. Who apparently has been spending time slowly murdering Jaxus. So R RC is now a... I know who RC is, but why is she murdering... She's now a, an assassin. Okay. In this rewrite, it's just becoming an assassin somehow, and I'm like, I don't understand that. Like she looks like what a Nokia would transform into. <laughs> Finish RC. Um, yeah, again, this redesign of Galatron's doing nothing for me. G Axis is quite similar to his G G2 form, but RC just no, it doesn't look right. And maybe I'm just too stuck in my ways with it, but I just it doesn't matter how many times I try to get into this, I really struggle with it. Um Cyclones and Scourge are, are fair enough, but I don't know what's going on with their arms. It doesn't, doesn't sit right. doesn't sit right. Um, and the storyline seems strange, derivative, I don't know. It's not, it's not an epic. It's not epic g ones okay. as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, yeah, I have tried reading this, but I just... Uh, doesn't sit right. Doesn't sit right at all. Well, there we go. Uh, let's skip forward, shall we? Yeah. Get to the good right. stuff. Cover gallery for Heart of Darkness. Even the covers they kind of annoy me. Right. And we go into infestation. <laughs> Already the artwork is stunning. Better. That is better, so much better. Um, so they basically crossed over between the comics, but this is most definitely. <laughs> I mean, okay, it's a new version of Optimus Prime, but you know, Bumblebee's running around. The interesting thing with the artist in this case, which is, I think it is Nick Bush, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think it's Nick. Um, is that he's someone who grew up with the original G1 comic. He was someone who was doing a little bit of artwork for Transmasters mm. UK at one point. Um, and James Roberts was doing writing, who ended up writing some of the IDW stuff. So um, kind of, you can kind of see the influences from it um, as you go in. So the influences are there. There's a definite Japanese anime manga influence going on as well. Um, and it fuses lovely because at the end of the day, Transformers came from Japan. The original cartoon series, though it was technically an American production, was actually animated in Japan. So there's the obvious anime and manga influences all the way through Transformers in, in, throughout time, basically. And this is a, a lovely melding of those different influences. So it's very much a feeling of the British comic and of anime in it, of manga in general, it's just great. Um, Storyline wise, I'm not awfully convinced, but yeah, is that supposed to be Windblade, an early version of Windblade? No, maybe not. My name was Brit. Okay. Right. Um, the infestation. So basically, it's zombie transformers again, <laughs> or rather, for the first time. Uh, ten, no, first again, time. because in G one we had in the G one British comic we had zombie transformers. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, thanks to Flame, who was an Autobot scientist who'd gone rogue and wanted to turn Cybertron into a war world, which again was something that was recycled in a later 
in Generation 2. The idea of turning Cybertron into a big battle station. Very Decepticon thinking, which is weird for an Autobot scientist. But there we go. Um, really, because for me it makes sense. Mm, you've got a great big robot planet, it could be a weapon, yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't turn into, well, as far as they knew, it didn't turn into a robot yet. It was just Primus at the centre of it. Um, but yeah, this is fantastic. I mean, how is that not Windblade? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. 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 Wheeljack turns up proud as being a dick. I don't like what they do with Prowl in the IEW universe. He turns into some vicious killer mm. type person and he's... No, no, it doesn't make sense. To me, I'm stuck with the old version of the characters in my head, I suppose. Um, but that, that looks great. It's cover art. Yeah. British G1 comic where Impactor came back as a zombie. Epic. There we go. Right, so um, I may have a problem getting into that, but the majority of fans, especially younger ones than me, because let's face it, I'm probably a bit stuck in my ways, love it. So you probably will do yourself. Right, well, that about wraps it up for us. So, uh, we'd, well, he would love to tell me your comments that you're going to leave in the section below, but. Yeah, just great lengths, great, great big long lengths. Yeah, so but you, yeah, you can subscribe to us here on YouTube. You can follow us on Facebook and uh, Twitter, and of course, there is the official Geekology website. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Bye. Hi and welcome to Geekology. I'm David. And I'm Sven. And tonight we're reviewing Transformers stuff. Yay! Transformers, the definitive, definitive, definitive G1 collection. I'll get that out in a minute. Um, right, you, you're probably wondering says. where. Does it really? Yeah, I can even get that out in a minute. I'm like, a minute, really? Maybe it takes a bit longer, but okay. See, I was running with it. See, I didn't, I didn't think you were. I know you might abandon it. No, why? It's only you were oversensitive about fucking things up. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Right, let's start that again, Joe. No, I think you should run with it. It's a bit late now. <laughs> You've made too many mistakes. Um, no, it's all good. I'll, I'll run with it for this one. I'll jog with it. How's that? I'll stroll with with effort. How's that? Waddle. Um. <laughs> oh, oh, cheeky fuck. It's the only reason he's got the beard. It's the only reason. <laughs> Dear God. Issue 9 is in fact volume 10. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Why? Now, why didn't they just say that? Because that would have just been funnier. Yeah. Right. Maybe you never going to turn the panel. Uh, stop, stop, stop. Yeah. I, I, I just want to have a very quick mm -hmm. look at uh, the triple breasted whore. Not triple breasted, it's a shoulder pad. Okay, never mind. <clears throat> look, look, look just there. That, that shocking artwork. I was, I was all That's intrigued a for a second. That's not a whore. Well, you know what they're saying? We'll cut that out, shall yeah. we? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's really edit that if we're going to edit that out. Anyway, motherfucker. Shaft! Ha ha ha! It's the last one of the universe! That's Flash, not Shaft. Uh, anyway.